Axel, you gotta break throws, man. I mean, if you want to play this game, you're gonna have to face the fucking facts. If you want to play this game, you're going to have to learn how to break throws. That's it. Simple. You're gonna have to. If you don't want to, that's fine. But once someone finds out you can't break throws, you're gonna look like a fucking moron. I watched Forsen play. He's crazy, dude. He's crazy. What is he talking about? He says shit like throws are overpowered because they're so good and hard to break. And when you do break them, you don't get anything for it. What you get for breaking throws is you get to not have to duck. Just imagine this situation where you are standing unstoppable in front of your opponent. You can break every throw, time's running out, they're panicking, they're gonna throw you. You broke it, no problem. One throw, I pushed one. Two throw, I pushed two. It's impenetrable. So that's OP is what I'm saying. You get nothing for breaking a throw. That's what he said. You get nothing for breaking a throw. But what you get is you get to defend against everything Perfectly. The way all Tekken games are usually designed, with very few exceptions, the way they work is stand guard is your standard defensive position. Stand guard. The only things that will crack stand guard are lows and throws. If you can eliminate throws from the equation, then the only thing that will ever hit you is a low that is faster than you can visually see and block. That is overpowered. That is overpowered. And that's what you are trying to achieve in this game. What you're trying to achieve is being able to never have to duck while doing everything else correctly. You, you want to duck when it's time to duck. This is a combo where there's a high in the string. I'll duck. This is a situation where he's done a mid a couple times. He's probably gonna throw me. I'll duck. Maybe that's a good idea. Anyway, you four send fans. Send four send that message. Tell him that what you get for learning how to break throws is you get to be a impregnable fortress. You never have to guess. You never have to duck. You will only get counter hit when you push a button. Logically, if you think about how valuable that is for your overall strength, that's what you get for breaking throws. It's not like a like a obvious thing, but it's a very valuable thing. It changes the whole game. You just have to imagine a game where you can break every throw. Some people don't believe it's possible because they don't know yet. I've I'll tell you the truth when in tag 1 it was harder to break throws back then. I didn't believe you could do it. I didn't think you could do that. And then Tekken 4 came out and I started to play more. And I started to break the wall push. Wall push was a throw that had like a four or five frame break window, really small. But you have contextual reads when one is going to happen. When the wall is nearby, there could be a wall throw, right? Okay. During that game, I felt that I was wrong. I felt like I used to think you can't look at the hands and break the throws, but I remember changing my mind and opening my eyes to the fact that it is possible. So then once you believe, like, oh, it can be done, then you realize its value. The value is... How are you absurd. supposed to look at your People controller if you have to look at the opponent's hands? That. I've never believed in a throw break trainer. In a game like this, I think that telling someone to go to practice mode and practice breaking throws is like telling them to go to fucking detention. You're grounded. Who the fuck wants to do that? That is so whack. Sitting there, breaking throws in practice mode, you barely are even learning either. Because, yeah, you'll be able to look at the hands a little better, but you have to mix in everything. Sidestepping, movement, Bro. blocking, 
a hundred moves that could come in your face. Or Just your look at the hands. So you have the to hands I'm supposed to look at and with playing as king. Uh? And Just which one is it? Uh? Fight. Any fucking Shane grabs any camera move. angles going like a fucking Hollywood movie. Fucking I can't see you shit, throw man. Scrub, they're gonna throw you. Sometimes he's not even using the hands. Because people don't like getting thrown. They sound like using fucking knees and shit, man. That's OP, you know? It's like... You do know that if you could break throws, you would never be able to be thrown. You know what I mean? You would never be thrown. <laughs> Just break every single throw. Ah, <sighs> uh, yes. We can check out part two. So whack. Sitting there breaking throws in practice mode, you barely are even learning either. Because, yeah, you'll be able to look at the hands a little better, but you have to mix in everything. Sidestepping, movement, blocking, a hundred moves that could come in your face or in your mouth. So you have to be careful and differentiate a throw from other things and the best way is in a real fight any opponent any level even if they're a noob you get matched up with a complete fucking scrub if you throw that scrub they're gonna throw you that's it i'm telling you because people don't like getting that's true. thrown they sound like four cent when they get thrown that's op you know it's like <laughs> You do know that if you could break throws, you would never be able to be thrown. You know what I mean? You would never be thrown. So it's useless. It goes from being overpowered. It's simply not true though, because the command crabs are fairly frame perfect. Like even if you know that one plus two is coming, cursing one plus two perfectly every time is not easy. It's not easy. Your your hands are on the your hands are on the uh, I don't know three and four because you're doing something down there, right? And then fast up to one two, press it at the exact same time, twenty frame. Uh, it's not always. Uh, it's not always. To even if you know, even if you see it. Absolutely useless. In Tekken Seven, it was easier to break throws. How often did you see people get thrown at a competitive level? So rarely that when someone did get thrown, the commentators would go, wow, he didn't break that throw. Almost as though it's expected of a top player to break throws. And that's because it is. The moment somebody doesn't break a throw two, three times, like this guy's a scrub. No offense, but that's how it is. If it's like three throws, four throws, it's over. This guy's a total scrub. And that's how it works. Not breaking throws is like not parrying junkyard. Not breaking throws is a lot worse than not parrying junkyard because you're only gonna get fucked up the by fuck scrubbing law junkyard. players if you can't break junkyard. You will get fucked up by any random asshole on the whole internet if you can't break throws. If they know, if you like, let's say I know you can't break throws and I go whisper in your ear, this dumb fuck cannot break throws. That is like the the match just went in the wrong direction. You are so fucked. And it's the way the game works. Humongous handicap. And that's not including the psychological frustration. One who... I don't even need to tell you. Someone who doesn't know how to break throws psychologically will become very frustrated and will make mistakes. And they'll whine and complain. That is what someone who can't break throws does. That's what you do when you can't break throws. Because you can't, like, <laughs> it's very difficult for humans to say, I can't break throws, you know, and I can't beat this guy. That's not what someone would say, you know? You would just complain about how good throws are. But I promise you, that's the wrong way to think about it. You gotta break them. 
or you're not playing right. You're playing wrong. Yeah, there's no other way to put it. You're playing wrong if you can't break throws. It's like you should be always striving to be able to do that. You have to try to break throws and not, not be afraid of them. You can duck throws. It's not a like against the rules, but don't be like scared of breaking them. Stand. I don't know, man. I feel like uh, he takes the mechanic for granted, though. Uh, there could be a lot of other mechanics that could have been in the game, and he would have said, oh, that seems fair, but in hindsight, or looking at it now as a new mechanic, he would say, oh, that's fucking stupid, you know? Uh, I don't know. I feel like uh, I feel like chip damage is already a good alternative. It's a better alternative to uh, to throws. I'm gonna be honest. They didn't have the chip damage in in Tekken Seven, did they? Right. But the chip damage prevents you from just standing up tall and just taking every hit. You know. Uh, that is not a low as well. Uh, so I feel like uh, I feel like chip damage is just a better mechanic than throws because now you can't just stand there for all eternity, uh, blocking stand guard, you know. Uh, so uh, throws could just go. I'm gonna be honest. Throws can go. I still think throws can go. I know. I I know his point. I know I'm a high level player in multiple games. You know, get good. Uh, I agree, get good. But it is a useless mechanic, I feel like. It's an unnecessary mechanic in the game. And uh, chip damage is just superior to it. For preventing people just standing tall all the time. <laughs>